I'd like to talk about the trade aspects of the negotiations that are about to, well, in fact, have started between the UK and the rest of the EU, which, let's not forget, is not France, it's not Germany, it's 27 countries represented in the European Council. And in addition, of course, it's the European Parliament, which likes to have a say in what it agrees to. Now, the trade aspects have been the subject of a lot of discussion and it's still somewhat confusing. For instance, just this morning I read that Philip Hammond says we, as the UK, can be outside of the customs union, but we can still have entirely frictionless trade. I find it difficult to understand exactly what he has in mind, because the whole point of being in a customs union is to have completely frictionless trade. A customs union is essentially what you do in order to get rid of customs border posts. Now, customs border posts do two things. Firstly, they check to make sure that in a free trade area, and a customs union is just one type of evolved free trade area, that in that free trade area, the goods that cross the border actually come from the country that is party to the free trade area, the customs union. So it's a little bit difficult to see how one can have no border controls on goods in a free trade agreement because otherwise there's nothing to stop products from country X coming into the UK and then being transshipped onto the EU. Uh, one can do this to some extent electronically, of course, with large products where one knows exactly where they're going to come from, like cars, because after all, one can trust car manufacturers to tell you the truth. But one can't trust this with all of the thousands and thousands of things that are made in the UK going to the EU or, of course, coming the other way around. How is one going to know? So these things are vitally important and it's a critical difference between being in a customs union and being in a free trade agreement. The second thing that customs posts can look for, this is not entirely necessary, but it's frequent, is to make sure the products coming in can actually be sold in the importing country. It usually goes by the name of standards. Uh, what's important about standards is they come in various flavors, but the harder form, safety standards usually, says that if you don't meet the standard, the product's illegal. It just can't come in, it can't be sold. So it's not a matter of quality, it's a matter of whether the product actually is legal or illegal. It might as well be heroin if it fails to meet a standard. That's another thing that customs posts do. Again, not always. There are ways around it in certain circumstances. But this is the sort of thing which, again, is a difference between a customs union and a free trade area. Now, the third thing to say is that if all of this breaks down and we don't remain in the customs union, which, of course, on the current political setup, however long that lasts, looks extremely likely. Um, if we don't have a free trade agreement, which is well, a possibility, and some might even say a probability, given the short time frame that there is for negotiating one, even if one accepts that there is a continuation of EU law or some other very similar transitional arrangement. Then what we have is WTO law. And of course, WTO law is not the end of the world. Most countries trade under WTO rules. It's just that the costs are much higher in many respects. And also there are whopping great tariffs on items which are of political sensitivity in particular, and to some extent economic sensitivity, so cars, uh, spirits, and also most other agricultural products. So there are certainly huge costs to being in the WTO alone. Dear world, yours.